Hello and welcome to the Babri Young channel. Now anybody who might have seen some of my other videos will know that I've got two sewing machines. The first one is a Genome M1550 and the other one is a Brother Boutique 30. Now these sewing machines have covers on them. Like all sewing machines they will have a little cover you put over the top that helps to protect them from the dust and the dirt while they're not in use and um, means that they hopefully stay in a slightly better condition than if you just put them in the corner and let them get all covered in rubbish and stuff. The only trouble is, is that these covers tend to get a bit ratty over time, like this one. This is the Brother um, uh, cover and they're always this sort of basically plastic thing. It's just literally what it is and there's rubbish inside there. There's a little pocket on this one that's been this has basically been heat seam together because it is literally just plastic. The, um, the one for Genome is a plasticky material but it's been stitched together but it's still just plastic. And they're a bit... and, um, and you can see where the handle comes through. This is all starting to tear and go and I've never really liked them much but you never sort of bother to change them. It's like, yeah, it's got a cover, just keep using that. So I've decided I'm going to try and make a couple of new covers for these two sewing machines. Now, my consideration would be, do I have to make two completely different um, covers or can I get away with one sort of overall generic cover? So I'm thinking of trying to make it so it's one design for both, but I'll have to have a look at the measurements, see what sort of sizing it is, because both machines are very similar in size really. They're not too different in their form and their footprint and and how big they are, how heavy they are as well, but that doesn't make any difference to the cover that goes on them besides lugging them around. But I have had a thought about that and come up with a couple of bits of material. And well, anyway, let's have a look at the material. The first one, actually, I'm going to go with this one first. This is a blue and it's basically, um, it's like a cotton canvas, but it's been, it's got a backing to it. Open it up. So that's the, that's the front, that's the main part of the material. But the, the back of it, it's like what they've done is they've taken like the cotton canvas and then they've waterproofed it by putting this plasticky coating on it. Um, whether that be put on it after it's made or whether it's been put on while it's being made, I don't know, but there's this plasticky feel to the one side of it. And the other side does feel a bit plasticky, but it's it's I think it's meant to be like a like a cotton canvas type thing. So it's not stretchy, it's pretty hard hard wearing that uh, you know hard wearing material. Um, and yeah, you could say that's not much of an improvement over what I've got, but I think it is. I think it'll be a better um, cover for it. But again, it does need to be hard wearing and stop all the dust and that from getting in there. And the other material is this, this blue material. Now this is actually a, a curtain. I've got hold of some curtains. Now this, again, it is, well, it, it, it looks like it's meant to be like a, almost like a like a linen type material that's the only way I can describe it but it's, I imagine it's probably polyester or something of that type um, maybe a nylon but I, I really don't know what it's actually made out it's got a bit of a shine to it um, so yeah but again this has a coating on it on the back and this is definitely a an applied coating after it's been made because you've got this white clear very plasticky coating on it so yeah they do have plasticky coatings on them but they the outside will look much better I think so we've got a dark blue and this sort of mid blue um, that I can use on the machine so if I try and make the um, a pattern so it's a sort of generic pattern so either one can go on either machine but I might try and make it so that one machine will have one cover so I know which one I'm going to pick up 
even though they've got a slightly different handle, so I should be able to tell the difference regardless of which cover they got on. So I suppose first things first, I'd better start off with measuring the um, sewing machines and see if I can make a sort of basic pattern design um, to, to start with. So better go on with it. Well, I've managed to make a, a drawing or a, a, I don't know, a pattern to scale, not to scale, it's half size. I managed to get it worked out as to what pieces I think I want or I'm going to have for this pattern. Um, I've got, well, this is the side. Now, the side does actually have a slight slope because I want it to flare out at the bottom. So the back, the back and front, basically just two triangles, two, two rectangles, um, shall I say, is basically, at first it was going to be both the same size, but actually if it's going to flare out, that means that the one side needs to be very slightly longer than the other because of that angle creating a bit more length. But other than that, pretty much the same, front and back, two sides. And then there's the top piece. Now the top piece on here, I've actually worked out that I want a hole in the middle of it so you can hold the handle. So I want to put a facing piece on behind that. So I'm going to have to cut out two bits, the main top with the hole and the facing piece for that hole to make sure it, you know, stays nice and strong and rigid and doesn't flap about too much. Not like the, the covers that they are on at the moment. They don't have any facing on them. So they're the pieces I need to make. Um, so to start off with, after doing this plan, I need to put it onto some tracing paper at full size so I can put it onto my material. I suppose I could, if I wanted to, try and just put it straight onto the material and try and work out my shapes because it is only rectangles but I think just to make sure I get it right I will put it on some um, onto some tracing paper at full size so I can make sure I get it right. I now have all my pieces cut out on, my, on the tracing paper. I mean this is a bit curly stuff because it's quite thick this um, tracing paper that I've used, not my normal um, paper that I would normally cut out on for me patterns but um should work all right looks like some um some weights down on it so gotta get um cutting out the material now so I can uh, actually start sewing stuff. Well I have blasted on and got all my you know my pieces done and my marked out material cut um so really I'm just ready for sewing now. I think I might have created myself one or two slight um, technical issues as it were. Um, the, the coming together of these sides, side pieces and front and back isn't a problem. It'll be the top that'll be the issue. Not stitching the main top piece in but this, well, facing piece. Because to put this facing piece in I'm going to have to put it over the, the hole because I've created this as you can see, a hole in the middle, and then I'm going to have to stitch this facing piece round and then turn it through, you know, turn it, whatever. Um, so that will be the uh, really tricky part. So I might do that 
first, get that facing piece in there and then it's done and then I just have to construct the rest of the bits together. Um, not quite sure which order to do it in yet. Um, I suppose if I've got this top piece done then I'd need to maybe put the sides on and then put the edging on or make these pieces up front, back, left, you know, left and right, the side, so, and then sort of turn it inside out and then put this on top and put that, I don't know, not quite sure what process order of construction is going to be just yet, but um, that's where I'm at. Um, so, and this material again, I'm using material that slip slides all over the place, so I'm giving myself a real headache um, with doing this probably. I expect I'll have to um, do lots of um, uh, basting stitches to hold everything in place while I um, stitch it, before I stitch it together. So, but hopefully, now they've got a bit these bits done, and I once I've done this facing piece, that'll be the bit I think I'm going to have problems with. Then hopefully the rest of it should come together quite quickly. Well, I've got the tops made now. This is the darker material, and the light one shows up better on this one. But as you can see, that hole's quite big. This is for the handle to come through. I think if I was to do this again, I'd make it narrower, so it's a bit of a narrower. Um, slot doesn't need to be really be quite so wide but it, it's done fine uh, basically to make this I took this facing piece put it on this side uh, right sides together and then I just stitched along the inner edge but only a small um, seam probably um, a centimetre at most about 10 mil even less than that maybe and then I just snipped the corners so I could turn the whole thing through and then I just sewed along the edge to hold it in place. So that facing piece is in there and I've got a hole in the top. All I need to do now, all I need I suppose, <laughs> um, is to uh, actually stitch the sides together. Just stitch the, the front and back to the side then I'll have the whole, as it were, main piece together and then I just need to stitch in the, um, the top and uh, well Hopefully it go all right, unless I decide to do it a slightly different way. Not sure yet. Well, hmm, better get on with it. Now that I've actually got the um, four sides together, um, see that sort of created this nice big rectangular piece, which is uh, yeah come together fairly well. Just quite straightforward. It's only four straight seams really. I've done both pieces. The um, this lighter blue got this white back to it and the darker blue which has got the dark blue back to it. Uh, now um, all I've got to do now though is to actually stitch this piece into the top so I've got to fix that into there which looks like it's going to be a bit tricky but well with the bag that I make I had quite a bit of experience of having to uh, come round corners like this and then go back on itself to get panels put in. So I don't think it's going to be too bad of a job. It's just going to be one of those jobs where I have to take my time to make sure that I get into the corners correctly and uh, hold it steady so it doesn't have too much slip so it'll be in the right position. So it's going to be a little time consuming but uh, I think it will go quite well hopefully, so i better get on with it. Cover number one is now finished. What I did when I put this top section in is to sew along the two longer sides and then have a bit of fun putting in this. Uh, these other two shorter edges. But actually it wasn't that much of a problem. All I did was to snip the corners um, so that they would fold up um, and then pin it in place and stitch along that edge really. I didn't go right to the very end, I didn't make it so it's like, you know, that where the, so the seams meet, it doesn't have to. I mean, it's not like it's uh, clothing, it's just a cover from a sewing machine, so it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. So, um, so yeah, and uh, both ends, and that went in quite nicely. And then I've just hemmed up the, the bottom. Now I've got quite a large hem here. Now, two reasons for that. One is that 
if you have a small one, like you get on the covers you get, sometimes that little hem will catch underneath the, the, um, the foot or the base of the sewing machine. So I thought, have a bigger hem, you know, it just makes it easier. But also, I mean, if somebody else was to be making this type of thing, my thought was, if you make it with a larger hem, then depending on the size, say the height, um, then you, you just have a smaller hem. I suppose the other thing you could do with this is you could put a bit of weight in here, something that's a bit of weighting. I don't know what you've put in there to make it, give it some weight. Um, there's a certain amount of weight in it anyway, but if you did weight it, then that would hold that down over the machine um, to hold the cover down. You just turn it through um, and, you know, it's, it's come out quite nice. I say that the corners don't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, it is just a dust cover. And uh, let's get this. Fight it. Did you have to fight with it a little to get it turned through? But um, eventually I'll get it turned through and it'll um, look quite nice. There we go. We end up with something like that. Um, and then that just goes on over the sewing machine. But I've got the second one yet to do, so I'll get on and uh, do that. And um, hopefully, for too long, both my sewing machines have new dust covers. So finally, I've made my own homemade sewing machine covers. Made up my own pattern, made, marked it out, drew it up and cut it out. And now I've got two covers for my sewing machines. But um, I think look quite good, and they're really, I suppose, quite hopefully quite hard wearing. I mean, the material that I've used is quite heaviest material. One is actually um, a reclaimed uh, curtain, which is the lighter blue, and the dark blue is meant to be, um, I believe, a cotton canvas, but with uh, like the waterproofing that they put on it. It makes it a bit sort of waxy, so. Uh, yeah, fairly hard wearing and hopefully will last for quite some time. And uh, yeah, I think they fit quite well. Now when I actually designed it with the um, dry that I did, I'd actually worked in to have a 15mm seam. But when I actually sewed it up, I only put in a 10mm seam. So it's a little baggier than um, I planned, but that's fine. It's, uh, it's just a dust cover just to make sure I don't get too dusty. Uh, the only thing I think I would actually change would probably be the slit at the top for the handle. That's uh, really it's too wide, it's too big a gap. So I think I'd probably just have that size of that gap. Um, so it's a much um, smaller slit, you know, same length but just uh, a lot narrower. So uh, you know, it just covers it up a bit more. It still allows you to grab hold of the handle and to pick it up and move it around but um, doesn't leave such a gaping hole for too much dust to get in, which is the reason for having them as dust covers to keep them nice and clean. But yeah, they work and they look nice and I think they fit just fine. And I think really if you had almost any size machine, except for maybe those big fancy specialist sewing machines, then generally that sewing machine cover is probably going to fit on most machines really. I mean, I could make uh, quite a number more of these I suppose if I had lots of more sewing machines, I suppose the one thing it wouldn't cover would be a um, be a serger overlocker because obviously that's a different shape entirely to, from a standard sort of sewing machine. So that would require a different pattern entirely, I suppose. Well, similar sort of pattern, basic sort of structure, but uh, would be a different shape. So yeah, I think that's the main thing I would change on that that that, that slot at the top. I think that would get changed so it would be a lot narrower than, than the size it is. Other than that, it's come out absolutely marvellously. So now two lovely blue or whatever colour um, you want to make them out of um, sewing covers. And that's brilliant. Enjoyed doing it and it wasn't too hard to do. One note with a sewing machine, when you're doing it, I found that using something like a denim needle um, helps a lot because you're sort of punching through this sort of slightly hard to work with, slightly heavier waxy material. So yeah, the denim needle certainly help to uh, make that uh, go through a bit more easily. And there you go, two sewing machine covers. One little footnote that I'm going to mention, 
I, um, I have decided to order and get a book which has finally turned up and um, before I show you this book just want to make it absolutely clear this is not sponsored in any way there is no publicity requirements or anything like that with regard to showing this book it just happened to be a book that I've seen that I wanted to buy and I bought it and it's arrived and the book is Make So Men by Bernadette Banner. I saw her going over um, some of the details with regards to a book she was writing uh, on her YouTube channel which I'm a subscriber to and I thought well have a look at that and um, see what it's all about. Saw that it was advertised and you could uh, actually pre-order it so I decided yep I'll pre-order that and uh, hopefully see what it's like and it has finally arrived and here it is so I will be having a good read of that. Um, this isn't a review or anything I won't be reviewing it this is just me saying I've got this book and I'm going to enjoy reading it, I certainly am. I've waited a little while for it to turn up because I did have to pre-order it um, but now it's here and uh, hopefully very enjoyable. Well thank you very much for joining me on my video and I look forward to joining you on my next video. Thank you, bye.